Thank you. Thank you guys for having me over. Uh, it's always a fun time, and um, we kind of wanted to have a little presentation just talking about mobile. I'm uh, Adrian, one of the co-founders of Marlon Mobile. And just a little talk about what we do is we measure the mobile web from a network of real devices. So we kind of are the guys who jump in and, and a little story about how what we do, it's kind of integrated together. I use some of our product to do some performance measurements, but I really sort of want to get in and show you guys a little bit about mobile, a little bit some stat, interesting stats that actually I just pulled out of my database just today that are even like my other co-founder just saw, our CEO probably hasn't seen it, but we really a lot of fun, right? So one of the cool things that I was thinking about this presentation of how to really begin the story, I, I'll, I'll tell you one thing, I only have one graph, you know, one of these like mobile is big graph, and after that, it's, uh, you know, we'll go from there. Remember the good old days of web performance? I'm glad I don't have to explain this thing. I was thinking, I showed this to a couple people, and they were like, what is that? So at least I feel that I'm, you know, a little bit, you know, we all remember. It was a good time. Like, remember you were like, you coded on a Mac, and then you're like, well, okay, but I have a PC under my desk. And then the PC guys were like, well, I code on a PC, but I have a Mac under my desk. And no, never the plane shall meet. Everyone's like, ooh, we hate each other. And remember how there was just like a handful of browsers, and then that was it, but it, it did it good in Safari, it looked good over, 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 you know, everywhere else. And there was that thing called Netscape that was just like a fly-by-night operation, and you never had to code and like deal with it ever again. It went away. It was so easy. It was a good time. Now I had a good time. Great browser war. At this point, like, when we code for the desktop, if it looks good on Chrome, it looks good on Safari, it looks good on, you know, Opera, and that just happens to be the case that they're all based on WebKit. So, good times. And then there's I, you know, we won't talk about that. Except for IT, it the world's a little better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was going to throw them a bone, but I was going to say it sucks. <laughs> you know, at least IE9 had some developer tools. But you know what? It was, it was a simple world. And we were able to, I mean, if you think about where we started, 1995, 1994, and where we are now with developing and coding pages for the web, it has really been a change. And I think if you think about everyone, any developer, any house that codes for the web, it's a good time, we kind of got our process, we kind of got a pipeline, and things have been you know, running smoothly, and then mobile came to the party. And everything has changed. And that's what we're here to talk about today. She's beaming. She is, she was like, those two guys are idiots. Remember, you know, I have a mobile. My iPhone there is faster than any of those products. I remember my first Mac, Paid like twenty four hundred for it for a crappy little desktop, and the monitor was like eleven hundred for a Sony Trinitron CRT. I think I could do all of that from that eighty six hundred on an iPhone. So here's my one graph, and this is the one that just came out a week ago, and I really love it because of what the story it tells us. This it doesn't say about mobiles exploding. Yeah, yeah, we got that. It doesn't say about mobile's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, we got that. What it says is worldwide subscriptions of smartphones are going to quadruple, quintuple in 2019. So when you look at what this means for the web, and that little piece is, oh yeah, there's mobile PCs and, you know, and tablets, and they're like 800 million. But 5.6 billion smartphone mobile subscribers. When you ask, when you tell the story, where is my traffic go, coming, going to be coming from to my site? It's going to be coming from a smartphone. And I know there's all these big conversations. Oh man, it, it's it's the tablet. It's all going to come from the tablet. It's all going to come from smaller PCs. Even right now, the breakdown in 2013 is 1.9 billion subscribers in the world. This is telling me that the mobile web is not a little fluke. It's not this thing, you know, apps aren't going to go away, you know, doing things for small factors isn't just this bump in a road, it's here to stay, and it's going to be here for a really long time, and it's the norm. I have another stat that I put in my book, that is, if you take the sales of PCs, to get to 300 million PCs sold a year, 
took about 25 years to get there. To get to 300 million smartphones sold in a year, took about one to two years. And when you get to the world of mobile, this isn't a, a world of the desktop where you've got one PC, you've got a Mac, everything's good, you've got a handful of browsers. Now there's so much more into actually accounting for what mobile has to do. Your user experience is this chain of events. It's based on screen sizes. It's based on the OS. Is it Android? Is it iOS? Is it Windows? Is it something else that we haven't even imagined about in 2018? Ubuntu. Well, exactly. You never know. Yeah. There is, you know, everybody laughed at, oh, there's this open source thing called Android, and now it's prolific everywhere. Yeah. It could be as easy as someone says, hey, I want to do a Red Hat version of an iOS, and it could be a And if they give it away for free, it will be a work. Cheap telecom things. There is, you know, carrier. It's not a little thing. I mean, the fact that there's going to be 1.9 billion subscriptions right now going to 5.1, that smartphone is not going to be on Wi-Fi. That smartphone is going to be on a carrier network. And now you're responsible for that experience. This is your experience designing for it. So one of the things I did yesterday and today, I decided to say, hey, I'm going to jump into our network. And we have a network of smartphones that run mobile web pages and test you know, URLs for apps. And one of the cool things that came up for our network is right now, there are 42 different screen sizes. That's great. So there are 143 different carriers. This is just on our network. And we are pretty prolific, but I bet you there's more. Just in devices that are run tests for us, 694 different devices. When you go to someone and they say, hey man, we've got a library of 150 different devices. There are, and these are just smartphones. These aren't Blackberries. These aren't Windows phones. This here is iOS and Android alone. There are 39 different OS versions out there. 30 of eight, 38 percent of it is iOS, 61 percent is Android. So I love how people tell me the story of, oh my God, iOS. There's no fragmentation to iOS. I looked at the bottom chain, and there's six one six two six three. 7172, just in the last month and a half, we have four different versions of iOS up. Oh, and 71 is coming out next week. The beta the, it was already announced yesterday. There are 1,074 different user agent profiles. So you meet people who are like, oh my god, I'm going to do a redirect by user agent profile. <laughs> Which one? Choose one. And this is just in our network. This is, and the thing about a user agent profile, and this is what we began to look at as we were capturing that data, the user agent profile changes. It's not static. It changes on the version of OS. It changes on the version of the browser. Your browser gets upgraded. Your OS gets upgraded. The user agent profile changes as well. There are, just alone, these metrics came from 53 different countries. So this is pretty prolific. This isn't just a fly by night operation. That's about halfway there. We're halfway there. We're almost there. On the countries. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we plan us as a company to be across every country, but still 53, that's not half bad. These aren't just little measurements from the US or Canada or maybe even like one Asian country. This is a lot. So we've been running uh, tests about for two, for the last two years. We test any mobile website, we benchmark large brands, we benchmark little brands, customers benchmark you know, each other against uh, everyone else. We decided to do an aggregate view. Right now, with the aggregate of the last two years, the average load time is 11.2 seconds. That's ridiculous. The average page weight of a mobile web page is 263 kilobytes. Are you kidding me? That is huge. Remember when we were like, hey, it's got to be under 150 for the desktop. It's got to be 50. It's got to be 75. Now things are running away. Uh, and this is a good number. If you're 263 on a mobile web page, you're having a great time. I'm going to show you some car crashes. The average HTTP request is 57. That's actually pretty good. Oh, for hit, yeah. 
So every time a DOM renders and it asks for a different request from a different page element, yeah. right now we're looking at an average that we're seeing is 57. And that's actually really good. I would say if you are actually looking at designing a mobile web page, you want to be under 50. But this is not. We'll show you some big brands that are kind of not even close. Right. I mean, that's if you're lucky. And so the one thing about mobile is everyone has misconceptions. And so I decided to start with these. Before we start talking about how to jump into mobile, what you're going to do, and how you're going to plan for it, I really want to get these misconceptions out of the way. Because they're driving me crazy. And I hear a lot of people, name brands, talk about these misconceptions, and it bugs them. So I'm going to throw them off right there. And the first one is something I heard at Velocity in New York. And I almost throttled the person. And the guy was talking, I'm not going to tell you who it is or who, what, what this person was or what site they were because I'm not going to be that person. Guy was doing a presentation and he's talking about optimizing performance and they're doing this and that. And someone says, what about mobile? And the guy just says, flips it off and goes, well, you know what? If you optimize for your desktop, you're fine on mobile. Bullshit. Wait, wait, foul. Well, I'll say, every time one comes along, how about we all jump in and just say the word foul? <laughs> I'm going to use some exa customer examples. The names have been changed to protect the innocent, but let's go in and tell a story. So we have a customer, customer A, and, <laughs> and if you look at their desktop site, I'm not going to tell you what they do. You can figure it out. It is 2.69 average on the desktop. Open up Chrome, look at the inspector, and you're looking, looking at this and say, wow, these guys are doing good. Two seconds on the desktop, on a Wi-Fi connection. That is really, really good. I'd buy a couple of years. And they use two CDNs right now. So they're on the higher end of the spectrum. They're like, okay, we've got our CDNs, we've got one for images, we've got one for content, we've got you know, a, a URL for our stuff, and we've had some conversations with them, and these guys are the people that you want to meet, and they, they, they optimize everything for the desktop experience. These guys are the ones that are you know, bit stripping images, they're doing just everything you want to do. This is the guys you want to go have a drink with and pick their brand. So what does it look like on mobile? Here's their waterfall from a mobile device. And it's going, and it's going, still going, done. The number right here that we need to highlight, 233 with 2.6 megabytes downloaded. Who does that to your data plan? 2.6 megabytes. I mean, people have data plans of 250 megabytes. That's so what went wrong? So there's a couple of issues that are here. One, way too many HTTP requests. Way too many elements being loaded in at the same time for a slow connection. We're talking about an average of 50. When I talk about you want to be under 50, these guys are you know, at the higher end of 233, and their site changes from maybe 175 to like 210 to 220 because they have different products on the page. There are way too many concurrent connections. There are way too many images firing off at the same time. Think of it as you're trying to shove four pounds of sugar in a one pound bag. It doesn't matter how many CDNs you use. The CDNs are all doing the same thing. They're all trying to rush to load in at the same time. So it doesn't matter if you use CD, two CDNs, three CDNs, four CDNs, and put, like in one of the examples, there was one, one CDN, there were 30 different images, all being requested at the same time. It's not going to happen. And the reason is that when you look at the, desk, the, the desktop browser versus the mobile browser, the mobile browser is pretty limited. The amount of concurrent connections that it can run at the same time is tiny. And the other thing that they did, 
They're playing on the strength of, hey, whenever I meet a web page for the first time, I'm going to cache a 1.3 megabyte of stuff. I'm going to cache a pilot. I'm going to cache the as much as I can. The cache on a mobile browser is tiny. And the thing is, it's not fixed. It changes. And literally, there's no manual out there. We want to, and you know, and you can actually like Twitter me, and I'll find like a little page that I managed to compile together from different people of velocity, different web searches, and they range anywhere from maybe 150 megabytes to anywhere to 300, to maybe half. It literally is a mess, and there's no standard for it. So that kind of, you know what? For the guys who could really get into the desktop, that's not a good strategy to think about. You have to do focus on mobile as a completely different channel. Here's my own metaphor. The mobile browser is easy. That's it's it's new. Simple. It must be easy. Exactly, it must be easy. It's so easy to do. Come on, everybody. Oh. <laughs> I know you guys got get with a little bit more love. <laughs> There's some good images there. Alright. I just opened up one of the HTML live. Compatibility site, and they. I mean, this is the one for mobile. There's way so many stuff missing there. You look at all the HTML5 elements, you look at all the APIs, you look at like, well, I really wanted to use WebGL, but uh, that's not going to happen on iPhone. And taking a look at Amazon Silk, kind of a lot of stuff missing there. So the consistency of the experience, that desktop browser is looking amazing compared to the mobile browser. Let alone the inconsistency of the caches and the small parallel connections and someone said, hey, I'm going to turn pipeline enough just for fun. Never know what you're going to get. So I'm going to test something else. Because I was the last one I was here, someone brought up a conversation about a, uh, a new technology we need to do Chrome called uh, WebP. I'm not going to tell you who. And they were like, really like, oh my god, it's the best thing since sliced cheese, and you should use it all the time, and it's awesome. And I agree. And then I go to my iPhone. <laughs> uh, dude, uh, there's something missing on your web page. It's not integrated in support. And I will never, from a user experience side, convincing someone else to install something else to run an experience solely for that thing, it's not right now. And that's on 5S. That's on the newest version of 7. And when you look at the waterfall chart of it, I took two images, looked at JPEG versus WebP, where's my savings? I mean, like, yeah, I, I, if I'm taking kilobytes and slicing it with a razor and trying to save, unless I have 300 of them, maybe, but the difference between 1.1, you know, 1.61 seconds and another 1.61 seconds, can I? Do it? Am I going to tell someone that I do it? If I'm going to go to the company and say, guys, I have an idea. We're going to do this. Someone's going to say, get in touch. My favorite one about this. There is nothing I can do about it. Oh. Uh, you got kids. I want you to say it. Bottom of your lungs. Bring it up, my friend. Bring it. Come on. Say it. Foul. Foul. Being that Marlin Mobile loves to benchmark pages, because we don't actually require any code or integration, so we can just run any pages we want. Here is Walmart versus Target versus Costco in May and June. Walmart is 2.5 seconds, Target is 5.1, Costco is 14.8 seconds. Obviously, someone is doing the right thing, and someone at Costco is going to get fired. You cannot in 2014, even in 2013. I'll, I'll give everyone a break for 2013. I'll say yes, yes, maybe there's nothing you can do about it. But in 2014, there's no excuse anymore. Imagine, I don't know how long you guys have been making web pages, but imagine 2000. You're making a web page on the browser, and you say, you know what, there's nothing I can do to make this page faster. That would, that would never fail, even back And if right now you said, there's nothing I can do, man. I don't know the Wi-Fi connection that, I, that the user's going to be on or the, nope, not an excuse. 
is not in Fusion Mobile anymore. Here's another example. Take a look at the real at the real traffic that's hitting the website, and you look at the different IP addresses that are opening up all at the same time. And what does this chart tell me? If all these IP addresses over here are okay and are between five and ten seconds, and then I've got a big spike. It's actually not my web page. It's time to figure out who owns 23.44.113.112 and it just happens to be your CDN. <laughs> it's time to call them and be like, um, hi guys, um, remember I write you really big checks and my boss writes you really big checks and I write you really big checks and my company writes you really big checks? Fix it. So now it's your turn. So you guys are going to jump in, build a mobile experience, you're going to optimize it, and you're like, all right, let's do this, what do I have to do? And here's my big belief in this. Mobile is about real users. It's in your pocket, my co-founder loves to say, it's in your pocket, it's on the go. That's kind of cute. Your users aren't in the closet, they're not in the desk, they're not in the cloud, they have to be on the devices. You have to design, you have to test, you have to have, whether it be user friends devices, whether it be use services like Marlon Mobile, whether it's buying a device, even from any point, from, whether you're a developer, a designer, a user experience, you have to be on your device. There's no taking, there's no, you know, remember you know, going back to that original example for the desktop design, how many of us, at show of hands, had something like parallels, or some virtual software to virtually represent a PC or a Mac. I did. It's not the same. You have to see there's so many intricacies on the OS version and the type of phone and the 4G connection. You have to drive those design decisions from the OS. And it's all about real data. It's looking at your analytics, it's looking at your rub data, it's looking at any data that you can look from the real devices and your real users to say, how does that do something about it? The simulator doesn't count. The other important one, you gotta know your users. Who are they? Who's your track? Are you predominantly 80% iPhone? Are you predominantly 70% Android? And there are companies that we've talked to that are 78% Android. Are they 20% iPad? More importantly, does it matter? So this is another one of our data points from the lowest, and this actually slide actually fell off the, you know, the graph. So the highest is, let's say, this was maybe three seconds. I would say there's about maybe seven x to eight x difference from the slowest to the fastest device. That's strong. So, who are your customers? Are they those guys? Or are they those guys? And so when you're thinking about designing that experience or optimizing to go mobile, you have to start by the simple question. Who are my users? Who are they? Where are they going to go in the next three to six months? Am I trending towards iPads? Do I have 80% traffic? Um, you know what, now I think I've seen everything. I've seen a lot of things. A guy who has a barbershop quartet on his phone, <laughs> that's going to make it into my next book. <laughs> that, that, that's a good one. I'll bring a quartet to your signing. Oh my god, you, you please do, that's awesome. So, you've really got to figure out, are they on iOS 7? Are they legacy people on 5? Are they on Android 2.5? You've got to make those decisions, and you've got to write it in your functional spec, and you have to make a plan. I uh, was talking in, in New York about a month ago after Velocity, there was a little bit of web for me up. And one of the things that I said is, you have to use real data like this to actually influence your design decisions. And you have to create a benchmark before you even start. So that, if you remember a long time ago, you know, even on the desktop, we used to start with a functional spec. And we used to say non-functional, you know, functional spec, we have non-functional requirements. And we would say, we've got to work on these browsers, 
and we've got to work on these screen sizes and blah, 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 blah. Now it's, who's my audience? Are they Android? What's the breakdown? Do I care about an LG Viper that's a, a POS? Do I care about the Evo 3D? Or do I care about that Motorola sideboard tablet that actually is not? I own like a stack of I own way too many devices in the world. Nobody should have a show. And the important thing of having all those devices, you've got to test them. You've got to see the car crashes before they're your customer. If you're the guys at Etsy, I'm sure you don't release anything without testing it on the desktop over. Because, yeah, exactly. I'm not, you're not going to say, yes, we do. Because <laughs> if you release something like any retailer and you lose conversions and you lose sales, you're losing billions of dollars, if not billions. What was that famous one that Amazon said for that, you know, that they wrote, oh, you know, for every second we lose $1.6 billion? Doesn't matter. It could be you lose a sale, you lose a sign up, you lose somebody, and this is the problem with mobile. It's the immediacy. If you and I are on our web pages and Amazon takes slow or PN, you just decide those ones. Does anybody you've heard of do a second, like, low bandwidth version of the app? For Some people do. There's a lot of things like, you know, I, I don't want to use it. Turn off some of the goodies. Yeah, there are. There are. Okay. But you have to test them first. One of the samples that I showed of the car crash, they were using another, I, I don't want to use names, but it starts with an N, ends with a Hoga 5, and uh, to make mobile their pages, still releasing 200 freaking HTTP requests. You've got to be on it. It's got to be, you've got to, make that design decision to say, I've got to be under 50 requests, I've got to be on these phones, and it's got to be under you know, 200 or 150. So you're right, there is the opportunity, but it has to start when you create and when you're actually going straight into testing and designing that page to actually have a limit of what it's going to look like and say, we're going to do low bandwidth because that Motorola Citrus, that crappy LG Viper is like, one of the biggest people that generates the most traffic and the most sales. So guess what? I've got a new blueprint, even in this version. So I'm going to throw in a couple of tests that I ran on our network. And I ran them anywhere from about 500 unique devices to about 100 or 150. It's actually a good, good amount. And so I, I joke that these warnings come from real devices. Okay. All right. And so I decided to do a couple of basic things. And being that I have a product that does performance checking on the internet, I decided to throw a couple of things. Two things that, as a designer, I have a background as a user experience designer, I've coded pages before, and you hear everyone look at this and say, hey, you know, what if I just did a simple mobile page with the load more or show more button to load in six or eight more pages? And we've seen that before versus the big page that happens to be this long page of death because someone did a bad responsive design job, and then all of a sudden, the page that is beautiful scales down to this like thing that scrolls down three or four panels. So I decided to say, you know what, in a lab, I created a prototype and said, I'm going to test it on a real mobile device. And so these slides coming here, you can quote me on this. If someone ever says, hey, guys, why do you want it to have it load six? Say, Adrian from Marlon Mobile testing this on real devices, he'll tell you this is true. My big page, that's 4.7 seconds. I haven't even put in images on it. I just put a basic style sheet, created a couple of images, used unique names so that they wouldn't be cached, and loaded them in. My six, 1.5 seconds. That design decision is 68% improved performance. I think this is like 100 or 150 over, like, in this case, maybe two weeks of time, just to see what it looked like. Did you try with just-in-time images? To see if there's, with just-in-time images, just to see if there's any difference uh, when the people scroll down and start loading the images? Uh, no, you know what I did? is I didn't do any tricks yet. All I did was do a really basic pattern, just to see what it would look like. 
So we haven't even talked about the tricks yet. What's, what's the small page again? It's what? just a simple, typical mobile page that looks a little squished that we yeah. see all the time. That a couple that just says, "Here's an eight image product page or eight products on a page," versus the other one that just gives you, oh, okay. in this case, three. Hey, don't laugh. One of those pages that I tested had. More than 30. We once tested a page that had 80 products. And that was because they took the responsive design, and this was eight, <laughs> and they just said, we're going to make it responsive. As fun as it is, you know, I like to call where we are in right now, like responsive design 1.0. Where everyone just says, hey, I want to write a media query in CSS and make the page shrink. And everyone has a good time. And if you look at, let's say, like the writings of a Jason Grigsby, I told him, you're not a responsive designer. He's like, what? I said, of course I am. I said, no, you're responsive design 2.0. We're actually going further than where we are right now. But a lot of that stuff of you know, doing tricks, replacing images, you know what? That really has to come up. The majority of the people right now are like, hey, you're responsive design, you know, and side of fries. And if you make it a milkshake, boom, sold. But that alone tells you there are some cost savings of thinking about doing redesign ideas. But you know what? Not all of us can do this. Like one of the best responsive design sites out there is the Boston Mobile. And the reason it's a great site is they turned around and they started from scratch. But the existing Boston.com will never become responsive design. Because they get so much traffic to stop the floodgates is never going to happen. But you can on another site where you're like, I'm just going to start from scratch and go for it. If you have that opportunity, go for it. If you have the opportunity, take a look at these design patterns and say, hey, I'm going to implement one of these. So here's the waterfall of the big page. There's just way too many concurrent connections for a little local process. And the way it treats them. It just says, hey, we're on the same server. Maybe if I did a CDN look familiar to, to the example, it didn't matter if these were on a CDN or not on a CDN, it would still do the same. Because it's just trying to load in way too many at the same time. And again, the mobile browser gets new. It's so powerful. So my next one is I just did a couple of little small ones that we read about. And they're just everyone knows about this, but I'm just gonna say, hey, I'm gonna do these on mobile devices and see whether they're effective or not effective. So, and this is my idea of just little news. So I decided to say the typical example. Hey, let's do CSS versus, you know, CSS sprites versus non-CSS sprites. Just on navigation. I didn't even put the page. It was so silly. It was just a really dumb example. And so on mobile, hey, I saved myself 18%. That's pretty good. That doesn't suck. But again, tiny things. That was actually one of the suggestions he gave that other customer. Where we're like, you know, guys, you should really use sprites. It's less invasive. So it's just being done on CSS. I think, I think you guys are good. Kills some nations you can request. Brings down, probably will save you anywhere from you. 18%. So real proof that on mobile will save you 18%. And then I said, hey, I'm going to go faster. I'm going to add another trick. I'm going to minimize our CSS. So I got the non-sprites down to 1.1. I got the sprites down to 0.91. I saved myself another 17%. So when one of these people said, hey, what would you do? And I gave them a list of what they would do. At the bottom, it was use all of them. Use all the tricks. And if you use all my tricks, and you say, hey, I'm just going to do really dumb sprites and minimize CSS, the minimizing, you can go to, like, there's already, like, 300 websites where you plug your CSS and it comes, it comes out minimized. It's awesome. It's so easy. Who wouldn't do it? I went from 1.22 to 0.91. I saved myself 25%. And my joke is, hey, you this guy. Yeah. The guy who hated web pages and loved apps. I mean, 25%. Who doesn't love 25% apps or web pages? He would be smiley. Moving forward, you got to get your system tools. Whether it's not just devices, you need tools to test on real devices. There's no using simulators, 
There's no plugging in your mobile domain into a desktop browser and changing the user agent string. Uh, you got to get some real tools on the mobile devices. So I'm going to throw some up, but I'm going to give you a caveat. And one of my special caveats is one thing that I see with a lot of tools is tools that use the web UI. How many of you guys know what that is? A couple of you guys. So the web UI view is a little piece of code in the window that you put inside an iOS app that mimics the browser, but it's not the browser. Not even close. I love how Apple was like, hey, we're going to give our app developers an ability to open the browser, but then we're actually going to make its cache really tiny, and we're going to limit the concurrent connections, and then what we're actually going to do to make it even worse is we're not even going to use the real JavaScript engine that Safari uses, we're going to use a half lame one, like a lame duck. And that's what we're going to give to our app developers. And so there are a couple of big name tools that use this to measure mobile web pages. And I'll pull out one of them. This is our friend WebPageTest. Test. Web page test is awesome. Except when you test on a, one of their mobile devices, if you can get on one. If you try one of their iPhones, there's like a weight of 109 tests in front. I, I don't have the time. And then I finally got on an Android device, and I was like, I'm going to test Facebook.com. And this is what it gave me. There's a couple of things missing there. I really don't think Facebook.com is just a redirect and an empty page, right? I'll fit it Facebook.com. I love that page. How else am I going to post my dog pictures? When you look at it from a real device on a real browser, it should be this. It should have 55 requests and it should be 1.4 minutes. That's what a real browser is. Again, it's great, it's quick, but it's not a real browser. So you can't put it up against a real browser and say, hey, do some of this work. So two tools I'm going to throw out. One is one that I used before is the Chrome DevTools. And it's pretty cool because all you have to do is you install Chrome on the device. You install Chrome on a desktop. You plug it in. And then you run the web page. And then the waterfall comes out of your desktop. And it's pretty cool. I don't ever have ever walked around with it with a USB cable or like been out in Boston measuring web page because I look like a totally weird. I mean, it looked like a totally weird. So I'm going to throw something out there. And this is one of our only places that we're going to throw it out that we're actually starting to sort of tell people is our technology is based on using a real browser. And we had built a debug tool to test mobile web pages. And we're like, this thing is freaking awesome. And we just not have to wait until the test is scheduled. And we're just going to use it, and then all of a sudden I realized, I'm like, I don't want to make this an app. It's on the iTunes store. If you go on iTunes store and you download Speedier, the mobile web page test, I don't it's kind of weird. And you enter a mobile web URL, it will go into a browser, and out comes a world. And it'll tell you these great benchmarks that we picked up from all these different pages. And I can give you guys a demo if you want after this. And I can give a little adapter. And you can run as many tests as you want. And one of the future functionalities is being able to send yourself a file. Just in you know, a waterfall format in HAR. And you can actually download it onto a desktop. And there you go. Real waterfall chart without having to be a crazy person walking around the desktop. Plug it yourself. And it's based on WebKit. So if you can get it on here, you're going to be pretty close. So I'll do a demo after this, but I have a funny inclusion. I am a big believer of the mobile web, hence why I built this mobile web. And being my one slide that I said, hey, mobile solutions are going up, mobile web is great, it's life's awesome, I believe in it, the sponsored design has brought a lot of good life to it. Here's my inclusion site. How many of you guys are Apple app developers? Any of you guys? Did you get this email last week? The email is, Dear Apple Developer, the App Store is closed for a week. You cannot send an app. You cannot get an app approved. 
You cannot do anything with us. We are going away for a week. Thank you very much. Please make sure you schedule this in your schedule. Enjoy your turkey. We will see you next year. The mobile web doesn't go on vacation. And neither should you, either will your customers. I always put a picture of soup Nazi here with them. No, <laughs> maybe I'll do it when I post the slide for you. No soup for you. No, no app for you. <laughs> you wait till next year. Questions? I threw a lot of stuff at you. I know that most of the presentation was about mobile web apps, but um, according to the statistics, I mean, if I have seen that uh, at least <clears throat> some companies are switching over to do nat native apps, and they're still connecting to the web itself. So comparing a web app to a native app, uh, I'm really a beginner on mobile, so uh, how much does it makes a difference between building an active app that is connected to the internet itself and is making requests versus the web app that is running on the browser? That is a really good question. And I heard this stat about a year and a half ago, and I don't know if it's still changed. About a year and a half ago, two years ago. And the stat that I heard is that the most commonly used feature in an app is the web UI view. And Apple's trying to get away with it. They're like, you shouldn't use it, but you should use RESTful JSON because that's inherently an HTTP call with a post or a get in front of it. Is there a difference? No, you're still connecting to the web. So you still have to worry about performance. Yes. And if you really don't care and you're like, you know what, I, I don't care. I'm going to make a, you know, a, an app that you know, shows a duck and I can scale it. And never going to connect for the web, then, then that's awesome. You A, still have to deal with the fragmentation, all the different screen sizes. Android is ridiculous. iOS, it's still pretty ridiculous. I mean, I remember I gave a presentation at Mobile Monday a couple years ago, and I was like, screen sizes, this is our set screen sizes, and there's only really two screen sizes 320 by 240, or uh, 320 by 480, and then the retina one. And I said, but this could all change next week. And then next week, they're like, hey, iPhone 5 came out. We have a new screen size. Isn't this crazy? So it's like, wait a minute. And then now there's other screen sizes. So it is important. You still have to deal with it. If you are going to connect anything to the web, it's still an issue. Mm -hmm. Because at the same time, it doesn't matter if you're on an app or website. User behavior doesn't change. Like the user who says, loads your app, can't you know, do the RESTful JSON request in time, and they're going to leave it. And now they're going to leave you in negative. At least on the mobile web, the angry users you don't have to deal with. On apps, you've given, they've literally given them a place where you can say, this sucks. Yeah. And every time you release a new version, more people complain. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. They don't complain about speedier results. Yeah. It, speedier by you, but you yeah. <laughs> You should have said, written on app review and said, Speedier should have ordered more meat lovers pieces. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Any other questions? And as far as the um, uh, device uh, or the user agent, is what's reported by Google Analytics accurate? You said it could uh, vary with I, I have a uh, really fun one because we just came up with this. You know that Google Analytics doesn't pass the user agent profile to you, right? No, but it has a device. And actually, the funny thing we found out is that just because we were splitting it up and we ended up having to force code our traffic to a certain version number, and even if you are on another, let's say you open up Chrome and you go into GA, GA doesn't show that you were on Chrome. It just says Android browser. And you're like, wait a minute, but I'm from on Chrome. If you open up Firefox or another browser and go look at your GA traffic, it still says in-app Safari or Safari. And the only reason I found this out is because we were doing the same thing, we were testing it, and we're like, yes, but we tagged our thing on uh, the Marlin browser. And it wasn't showing up until we had to forcefully change our user agent stream to say, and that's when user, and that's when GA was like, oh my god, you're right. It is, a, it is not the norm. So let me change it for you and let me show it to you. But usually, you never know. 
So that's one of my problems with GA. And again, okay. you get what you pay for. So it looks to me, I'm not, I'm not in your, your league as far as the mobile side of the app, like most of the performance you're looking at is download. It's retrieving information off the web. So uh, one of my customers does mobile surveys. And I was at Amazon Web Services Conference last week. They had up to 9,000 people in that conference, and most of them in one room at the same time. Yeah, that's been really loud. <laughs> well, not necessarily talking, but they say, okay, now we're going to have a survey, and everybody pulls out the mobile phone, clicks to it, hits the app, hits go. So that's an upload problem. Yeah. He knows a smaller amount of information, the pipeline to the other end. And our end is the database, and a lot of times it gets blamed, and sometimes for good reason, because those things have to go through and now the latency period for sending and acknowledging and getting to the next step can be really... Well, and this goes back to like conversation about know your users. Like, my funny one is, years ago we did a blog post on Game 7 of the State of Chicago. And uh, we decided to point it at Boston.com and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. And then it goes up, it goes up, it goes up. It's like 30, 60 seconds, and then And uh, we showed it to one of the guys at Boston.com. And he looked at it and was like, you guys are right on. This is where uh, I got the alert that things were going wrong. And this is when um, I really started panicking. And this is when I got my call from my boss who yelled at me. And this is how kind of the traffic went down. So I thought we were good and tried to go to sleep. And this is where I got yelled at again. And it's about predicting the trend. If you know that, and this is just a simple user experience. If you know that 9,000 users are going to get to the same time, you know, maybe you bring it and this one. Like, try going to a Patriots game and actually trying to post on Facebook. So right but that's one of the limitations. If you know that's going to happen, predict the trends. And that's one of the things that we're looking at is to try to give our customers a trend, like what does Black Friday look like? And then they can begin to, to figure out. Same thing with the other example of where is the problem? Is it you or is it Akamai? And then on that big one, you can say, um, I think it's Akamai, so let me call me out well, I'd refer to that. The yeah. app server. The, right, and then you can actually go in and with that data be look in and see where is it happening, where is the fault, and where do I have to increase it. So it sounds like most of your customers are coming from a standard web development background trying to then port or at least do something on, on the rather than oh, that one example you gave Boston.com on mobile where they start. A new. Um, is your recommendation that you throw out and not try and port? Or um, the thing about it is, not everyone can do be the boss. Of not everyone can start. New. I've never been able to start a new with any website. It's just not. I mean, who gets that opportunity? It's very rare. But you have to really, even if you're actually going to redesign, even if you're going to optimize, even if you're going to start with a responsive web design, you have to start with who is that traffic, who are my users, because you need to figure out what you're going to design to. And I think this is one of the biggest problems right now, and this is where a lot of our data comes in to tell that story from pre-deployment of, hey, you know what you should really do? You should actually run it on your old site and see what the car crash looks like, and then actually set yourself a series of milestone goals, as it should be. And here's the funny thing about it, is I come from a UX background. We measure everything. If someone came up to me and said, hey, we have data on our current traffic, and our current design patterns look like this, and our current issues look like this, that's a different conversation. Because now I'm looking at it and saying, well, you know what, I, 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 maybe I shouldn't tell everyone that we really want to have 20 things on the final page. We have one example that I put on here that actually is in a book, is we talked to a customer who had about 60 comments on a page, just simple text comments. And we were like, you know, you should maybe break that down to like 10, paginate them, and all of a sudden the closet's also like two, three seconds. 
because, and then I actually measured it too. I actually measured that pattern to say what happens. And there's an amazing cost savings there. And that's an optimization. So you can actually start looking at your current pages, especially, you know, the power of analytics is you know what pages are being hit the most. You know where the traffic is coming from. You know where your drop off is. You can actually look at those mobile experiences, optimize those experiences, go back to your traffic and say, did I actually lower the amount of drop off that are happening on those pages? And if you guys haven't had it into it, a lot of people haven't, there's a thing on GA called visitor flow, and you can actually see the flow of traffic and where the drop offs happen. And they're really cool to just like they look like drop offs. And so therefore you can actually look at a page and say, hey, where's the majority of my traffic? And then that's going to tell you from an optimization standpoint, we should do this, 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 everything else doesn't matter. Fix those and then go back and do it again. And like any development and design, it's an iterative process. Well, and, and along that same line, isn't it likely that uh, for Home Depot or somebody, store hours, store locations, uh, maps to the store, directions to the store will be a lot more, a lot busier, a lot more important to pay attention to for mobile than the, than the inventory? You, you know what? You really you don't know until you look at your traffic. You know, that, that first one of look at your users, look at your traffic, put a plan in place. I have an example of years ago I was doing a consulting project, years ago, and uh, I looked at the analytics, and there were like two web pages that were four levels deep that had 80% of all traffic. And the reason is, is it was a page on George Washington, so it had like tremendous SEO. So everyone that would do search for George Washington would get this page. And so a pile of people were coming to those pages. Nobody went to their home page, nobody went to their contacts, nobody went to the hours. They went for those two pages. So then the conversation was like, I kind of said, I really think you should optimize those two pages because now you can actually convert some of these visitors into potential members and potential ad revenue. This is the world right there. So, you know, and as I said with my, it's little wins. It's those little wins that you can do and using the performance measurements actually see whether or not those wins are helpful for you. And the other important thing is by doing things like I'm doing here is actually trying them on prototypes so that you can prove that they're going to win or try them on a version and then go up to the rest of the organization, the rest of the business, you know, your business partners or you and say, is this worth it? That's a different story. This is a great quote that I didn't actually put in here. It's a quote by Jason Greasby who said, the problem with responsive design isn't coding. That's not the hard part. It's the culture change. Because now all of a sudden, all your pages are mobile. Whether you're ready for it or you're not ready for it, you're mobile. And even without responsive design, you're still mobile. So, you know what? It's time to start looking at that, whether it be you know a CSS here and going over and over in the iterative process to make sure you finish it. And again, just like that stupid little you know test that I ran, that I you know ran it a couple of times and checked it, I was like, hey, I could save 25% here. That's awesome. And I know that it's actually going to work on you know mobile devices across the board. Hey, you guys want to see speedier? Right? So let me try this out. I just got this the other day, so let's see. Technology. Okay, so here's speedier. You can see all my other 
crappy app that I have on my phone. And it's a real simple interface. It's like, what do you want to do? So I'm going to do, and let's see what happens because we are an LTE and we are on one bar. And you know, we'll do this. We'll try. I have not tried it here. I don't know if the connection is any good here. I'll try Google.com. And what you do is you start it, and it goes. Oh, that's pretty cool. Hey, the site could be faster. I think so. Seventeen. I I'd love to be under four seconds. That'd make my. Hey, if Walmart can be under four seconds, I'm thinking Google can be under four seconds. I mean, complex. <laughs> All right, and then I can actually click on waterfall. In boom, here is the waterfall. It is 13 requests. It is 334 kilobytes with an onload of 2.6 seconds, which is pretty cool. But then you have a pile of elements that load in afterwards. And they've got a couple of redirects and things like that. So you know what? There is one, three JSs. There's one, two, three, four, five, six images. And then there is the uh, the page itself. That's pretty cool. That one tried another one. So can you export that data? I can't. It's actually going to be in the next version, where I'm just going to put a share function just to send the har viewer. So we end up using the har file. You, know, you hear me uh, say the har file format. So the har is a file format for waterfall charts. That is an open source format. And so we did a couple of adjustments to the open source reader, where we added cute little images and made it easier to read. So I'll probably like fork it up GitHub or something like that. But um, it's commonly used. It's really nice because it actually archives all the headers, all the content, the everything you ever wanted in a nice visual format. And it's actually the only really good waterfall viewer that's out there. You know, if you ask these founders what's their favorite hard viewer, you'll be like, it's the hard viewer. My software is hard. So that's what we based on. So pretty cool. Let's uh, try another one. Let's try. I don't know. Somebody give me a URL. Wait, wait. Wayfair. Do I spell that right? Wayfair.com. Let's see what happens. And the Wayfair guy left. Any Wayfair employees here? <laughs> no. Anybody? <laughs> and, oh, 7.56 seconds, 23 requests, and one megabyte. Are you kidding me? Come on. Let's look at that. All right, there are three jQueries. There are soy sauce.css. I'm like looking under the covers here. There's a minimize. There's wow. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine JSs. Wow, that uh, the GA. Like chunks. Yeah, there's some pretty good chunks here. It's a hundred. There's parsley.js. Do they only order things by food here? Company? <laughs> Analytics, a little alone. I mean, in total is 6.25 with a one second over. And look at that. What's that? 3.11 seconds. There is a JPEG here that is a three second hog. Yeah, time to do something. There's one that is someone's their CSS file is 102 kilobytes. It's half of what that average is, just on a CSS. And it's two seconds. And the cool thing is when you come in results, you actually see all the results that are here. And at any moment in time, you can actually click on one of the waterfalls. So who's, that's just a random website. Don't look at who that is. Oh, God. <laughs> two is 260 views. And uh, here's target.com, 7.7 7 seconds. Wow, there is. That page took 6.28 seconds to load. All of the pieces are so good. What is that big piece there? Wow, oh, that is awful. The HTML page is 6.5 seconds. Who makes these pages, people? Come on. <laughs> and you know what? So you have a nice little list. And we uh, have a couple of other things here. So you can actually add cookies. You can add HTTPS. And there's something that we're called quick mode. So if you just wanted to cut it off at the onload, you can actually cut it off at the onload. I don't think I described it. I think I described it easier than I described it right now. I described it as quick mode, removes the additional two seconds of browser or nothing great. That's way too much. I should have said it cuts it off at onload. But I don't know if anyone can tell. 
All right, and it also tells you whether or not it's on uh, carrier signal or it's on Wi-Fi measurement. Um. So there is no sort of capability coming soon, but the shared capability is going to come in the next version. And then the cool thing about it is if you start a new test and start, we have a stop button too, so it says I will do this. We should be tasked again. Let's do one more. One more. Well, I'll, I'll throw our client company. So Power Elastic, P A R. Okay, got to take it out. P A R. And then Elastic. E L A S T I C. I'm a visual guy. I'm dot com. Dot com. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. It's embarrassing. It's like, oh my god. Well, it's like, a brilliant web facing. Or, of course, I'm just like, that's not that bad. You know, 45 requests. 651k, what are you loading on my phone, my friend? <laughs> yeah, that's probably a good tool to straight back. So. Oh, God, exactly. I thought it was the uh, barbershop audio file. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. You have a JS for your counter as well? Jesus. You're like, we have a counter, and, you know, why don't you just implement the blink tag? That even takes well, less sense. This is the old website. This is new. <laughs> I like that one. You know what I love about every time I give a demo of this, it like really shows people what's under their covers, and they're like, "That was me, man. That was this guy that sits next to me, and he likes doing like paprika.css, and here's a Drupal that's like this much, and oh, Jesus, here's jQuery, and you just include the entire jQuery library. Like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> Come on, I'll do one more. One more. Let's embarrass one more person. GSM.com. Uh, oh, that time oh, really good. Oh, you finally got a win here. Really? 417? What are you shoving? It's like one point. Your logo is 1.46 <laughs> seconds? That's shameful, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want to make sure it's really big. Do you know that your GA tag, and you have 42 lines? No, the GA tag is one second itself? That is shameful. So we, we don't actually have a mobile application on it. <laughs> yeah, we, we have native apps. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. Um, this, yeah. This, oh, this oh, oh, no, no, don't worry. I believe you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm rather surprised at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that little time. I was expecting to take a lot longer. <laughs> All right, let's do. Let's do. Did I spell it? No, 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 all right, bum, 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 bum. What is this JPEG that's 74K? You've just got a lot of those images. Yeah. Oh, so cat color. They're like, the fact that they added like the bigger senior size. Oh, yeah, it must be those people doing those covers for coasters and all that weird stuff on Etsy. They must be that. Yeah, it's, it's a blame like, user. 64K for the images, like, and there's probably 25 of them, bitch. It's a lot. Oh, God, yeah. I'll talk a little bit about that. There's a 69 kilobyte. Yeah, it's all like 60 and 50. So with somebody like, hey, I have an idea. We're going to do things at baseline of 50 kilobytes each. Let's make sure if it's too small, let's make them bigger. If it's too small, let's make them bigger. This is awesome. Let's do this. All right. Let's do even one more. And then we'll like raffle out a free book here. All right. Hey, you try to the mobile. Marlin Mobile? Marlin Mobile, yeah. Sure. It's not mobile optimized, it's a... <laughs> it's a response page. And any large images are my fault. <laughs> I know, because Justin was like, give me some big images. All right, 4.96. Some of us are feeling better right now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Let's see. And I'll tell you, it's those images. Yeah, it's that image. 689. Yeah, I know. Hey, the plumber's house has deep pipes. <laughs> no, that's all.